Now, we are often told about studies and, and, and polling that come out of uh, Muslim countries and also non-Muslim countries in regard to how they view different subjects. Now, uh, one of them is terrorism. One of them is Sharia law. So uh, I want to quote a Pew Research poll here. Do you support the establishment of Sharia as official law, they asked, in uh, majority Muslim countries in North Africa and the Middle East? And that is a stunningly high number. 74% of the people in those countries said yes, they support Sharia law. Now this is where a lot of people stop and go, oh my God, that's it. Uh, they all believe in chopping hands, heads, uh, etc. But of course the interpretation of Sharia law is enormously diverse. Uh, I'm not Muslim, so I'm not going to bother trying to figure out who's right and who's wrong about how to interpret Sharia law. But what Gallup did in their survey was, they said, okay, look, we're going to specifically talk about killing civilians. So if it turns out, for example, the Sharia law does in fact want you to kill more civilians, well, that's obviously going to be problematic. But let's find out if that is what they say, right? If that is the interpretation of the people in those countries. So they asked, do you believe in the deliberate targeting and killing of civilians is sometimes justified? Now, the other option was never justified. So 14% of the people in those majority Muslim countries in North Africa and the Middle East said that yes, it is sometimes justified. So that is, uh, that's a little damning, it's nowhere near the 74%. Obviously, most people do not interpret Sharia law to mean that at all, but 14% is an unfortunately high number. Now, before you judge, let's find out what other countries answered to that same exact question. In the UK, 33% believe that the deliberate targeting and killing of civilians is sometimes justified. Not collateral damage, not accidental, deliberate targeting of civilians. They were very clear about the question. How about the United States of America? 50% thought that deliberate targeting and killing of civilians is sometimes justified. So if we're looking at polling to determine who is more violent and more prone to what we normally colloquially called terrorism, the deliberate killing of civilians, it turns out the population of the United States is about four times as likely to support the deliberate killings of civilians. Now I know people here will say, no, but that's unjustified, we had to do it, we had to do it. But they ask the same question, is, do you think the other side doesn't think that they had to do it? Well, apparently they don't. They're under similar circumstances, if not worse circumstances oftentimes. You think the people in the Middle East don't know the consequences of terrorism and killing civilians? They live it, they see it every day. Maybe that's part of the reason why they're like, no, we don't want that. Only 14%. Here in America, 50%. Now, if you don't like those polls, well, you gotta look in the mirror and figure out what's going on with you. All right, so if, if you think, wow, that's something we should work on together here in America to, get, to make it better, great, and I agree with you. If you want to ignore it and say, no, 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 I just want to keep blaming the other side, okay, then perhaps you don't like polls and you don't like facts. Okay. Now, a lot more interesting uh, parts of the study. Now, do I think that Americans are, by their nature, more likely to be prone to violence? No, I don't. I think that there are other factors. And the people who did this survey for Gallup obviously recognize that there are other factors. In my opinion, they're not knuckleheads who are like, it is just religion or it is just America and that's it. No, so they asked about other factors. Uh, when the survey compared results from Muslim majority countries and compared them with non Muslim majority countries, one more fact here on, on the deliberate civ civilian killings, they found that respondents from Muslim majority countries were 6% less likely on the whole to say that killing civilians by military operations were sometimes justified. So now that's not Muslims versus UK or the US. That is majority Muslim countries versus um, countries where they're majority not Muslim. And the Muslim countries said that it, they were less in favor of killing civilians. The non-Muslim countries more in favor of killing civilians. Now that's just a 6% difference. But if you're going by this idea of, well, the Muslims are more likely to want to target civilians, according to the polling, that is not true, it is the opposite of true. Okay, now he, we get to the different factors. In countries with lower United Nations Development Program, Human Development Index scores, people are more likely to say individual and military attacks on civilians 
are sometimes justified. So keep it real, uh, how developed a country is, is relevant. Now there are notable exceptions to this, but that is why uh, I believe some of the smarter approaches to uh, trying to target terrorism and, and lower it is to say, hey, perhaps we could help in the development of some countries. That's not because we're great humanitarians, although that's a wonderful thing. It's so that we can reduce the terrorism in the world. Gallup's research indicates that higher levels of public acceptance of attacks on civilians are linked to social unrest and national instability, underscoring the importance of this perception measure to the health of a society. So the more stable a country is and uh, the healthier it is, the less likely there is to be terrorism coming out of it. Now, unfortunately, there are exceptions, as they explain here. There are notable exceptions. For example, the U.S., Israel, and New Zealand score high on measures of stability and human development, but their residents are among the most likely in the world to see military attacks on civilians as sometimes justified. Look, uh, you might be unsurprised by the U.S. and Israel on there simply because they're constantly having to deal with uh, individual attacks against them. They've got large militaries, but you see that you can't just generalize. New Zealand is also on the list. So there is a cultural aspect of this, and uh, we should try to figure out what goes into that cultural aspect. Now, uh, more data. The residents in richer countries in general are more likely than those in poorer countries to reject individual attacks on civilians. So now this makes sense if you're in a richer country, uh, you know, you don't want individual attacks. You've got a big military, but you don't like the terrorism when it's an individual attacking civilians and deliberately targeting them. But again, there are exceptions. Two notable outliers are Egypt and a lower which is a lower income country where you would expect more support for individually targeting civilians, and Lebanon, where residents are among the most likely to say these attacks are never justified. So Egypt and Lebanon, even though they are poorer, say it is never justified. Okay, they're on the highest in that category, among the highest. Now, on the other side, uh, on the other side of the spectrum, Singapore, a high-income country, is among the top ten countries where residents are most likely to say individual attacks are sometimes justified. Why Singapore's on that list? I honestly don't know. That's why you need to study these things. They're not as simple as just looking into one factor. So they say wealth is associated with rejecting individual, not military attacks on civilians. So again, if you're from a wealthier country, you're more likely to have a military. And so you're saying, yeah, if the military targets civilians, not so bad. But if the military doesn't and individuals do, that's really bad because that's the ones we got to deal with. Now, you think that makes sense, but again, it's nothing is overly simple here because listen to the next part here. They say there is no correlation between public support for military attacks on civilians and how militarized a society is, as measured by its defense spending as a percentage of GDP. This suggests that a country can have a strong military and a public that unequivocally rejects deliberate military attack on civilians. So being wealthy does correlate with supporting military attacks against civilians, but having a large military doesn't necessarily do so as well. There is an exception which is the United States of America. For us, uh, our large military, we do have a large military and we do say overwhelmingly compared to the other countries, not overall majority, but but it's as close as you can get, 50%, saying that uh, or that attacking civilians deliberately through our military is acceptable. So nothing black and white here. Let's let's continue to dive into the numbers. There are more surprising findings. Public tolerance for individual attacks on civilians is not linked to social norms as measured by external gender parity indicators. While gender equality uh, may be a desirable income in its own right, the evidence does not support popular claims that socially conservative societies are more likely to sympathize with violence. Look, I have to confess, I was surprised by this one. I was also surprised with the earlier one. I'm not surprised that the U.S. is an exception, but I'm surprised that if you have a larger military, in general, you don't say, hey, you know what, the military killing deliberately killing civilians is, is not that bad, but apparently a lot of the European countries do not agree, much to their credit. Now in this particular uh, last one that I read you, I'm surprised that I would have thought that if you have gender disparities and you think it's not a big deal to, to keep women down, and I know that's a way oversimplification, that you might feel like, ah, it's not that big a deal to target civilians. But it turns out that is not the case. 
that that does not hold for whatever reason which by the way doesn't make the gender disparity any better that is a different problem and one that some of these countries have and one that we should focus on as well but within the context of this it's a surprising result okay now in europe and the middle east and north africa those are the majority muslim countries usually overall overall i should say those who reject military and individual attacks on civilians are more likely to say religion is an important part of their daily lives Look, uh, again, I'm agnostic here, and, I, and I've got some issues with religion across the board. And if you told me that uh, more religious people were more likely to support targeted civilian deaths, I might have believed you. And I would have said that that was, and I would have guessed that that was people that were more religious, whether they were Christians, Muslims, Jews, Hindus, etc. Turns out I was wrong. Turns out the more religious are less likely to support targeted civilian deaths. Look at the numbers. So, though there appears to be a difference linking religiosity and sympathy for attacks on civilians among the residents of the U.S. and Canada, this difference is not statistically significant. So, I don't want to overemphasize this because it's not statistically significant. But the one place where they did find a connection between religion and deliberately targeting civilians was the U.S. and Canada. So, but again, don't overfocus on it because it was a small, small difference. Okay, finally. As you see here, there are a lot of surprising results, and it's it's not an easy issue to tackle. Uh, development's a big part of the uh, exercise here, as you see. Part of the answer of getting it right, stability for countries, but it's not always the case. The U.S. and and, and New Zealand and Israel are relatively stable, but yet uh, they believe that the military killing uh, civilians is not that bad. So there are other issues to address. Why does Singapore feel that way? It's an important thing to look at. Why are Egypt and Lebanon relatively poor, but think that killing civili targeting civilians on purpose are terrible? Huge scores in that direction. So let's dive in more, but I will leave you with one further stat today to give you a sense of unfortunately where our country has gone wrong. And there's and this is what Noam Chomsky says, look, the reason he focuses on the United States is because he's a U.S. citizen. Theoretically, in our democracy, there's something we can do about our own country. So keep this in mind, the Gallup poll says residents of the U.S. and Canada are most likely to say that military attacks against civilians are sometimes justified. Americans are the most likely population in the world, 49%, to believe military attacks targeting civilians is sometimes justified, followed by the residents of Haiti and Israel. Now, my personal opinion is that deliberate targeted attacks against civilians are never justified. They're not justified when a non-state actor does it, an individual. They're not justified when a state actor, a military does it. You do not target civilians because that is not who you're fighting. It is both counterproductive and deeply immoral. I would hope that the rest of the world comes to that opinion. It looks like there's a lot of work to do across the world on that opinion. But we've got to start here at home because this is our country and it turns out we unfortunately believe that more than almost anyone in the world, Young Turks.